set of videos is on chemical reactions and enzymes. These few videos will conclude all of the content for Unit 2. A chemical reaction is a process that changes or transforms one set of chemicals into another. In these processes, we do not create or destroy mass or energy, so they are conserved. And in a chemical reaction, we have reactants, which are elements or compounds that come into a reaction, and then products, which are produced by the chemical reaction. And I'll have a picture um, later on that kind of shows you what that looks like. But a chemical reaction involves change in the chemical bonds that join atoms in compounds. Energy is released or absorbed whenever chemical bonds are formed or broken. So think about a bond like a pencil. If you have a pencil and it's connecting uh, two things together, using it, uh, the point is in one thing and the eraser is in another thing. And you break that pencil, you're going to hear a popping sound, right? Well, that popping sound is a release of energy. You just hear. That's how it's a, it's a sound wave produced by breaking the pencil. Um, then if you were to put it back together magically and you had a whole pencil again, you could break it again and get the energy out. So you restore the energy when you put it back together and you break the pencil and you get the energy back out. There are a couple of types of change energy changes that you can see in a chemical reaction. You can have an endothermic reaction where energy is absorbed from the environment. In this case, the beaker or the container would get cold or colder as a result of the reaction. Um, an example of this would be the evaporation of water. Also think about in the summertime when you get hot, you sweat. Well, sweat is mostly water produced by your sweat glands. and um, that sweat, when the wind blows or when, when it's evaporating off your skin, it has a cooling effect. That's an endothermic reaction. Exothermic reaction is when energy is released into the environment. The container will get hot. Um, so energy is released like if you're burning something, um, the reaction is letting off heat energy. This graph shows you the reactants, which are what comes before the arrow, and the products. So in an endothermic reaction, the reactants start with a low amount of energy and increase energy as the reaction proceeds and goes to the products. Exothermic is the exact opposite. You start with a lot of energy, and then you get the reaction started and end up with a lower amount of energy in your product than what you started off with. Chemical reactions that release energy often happen on their own, and chemical reactions that absorb energy uh, will not occur without a source of energy. So you have to put a little bit in. Um, for an endothermic reaction to occur. Quick note about the sources of these energies. Um, plants are going to get their energies by cap energy by capturing um, light from the sun and photosynthesis and they store it in energy rich compounds like glucose. Animals get their energy by eating plants or other animals. Activation energy is the amount of energy that it need, that's needed to get a reaction started. So I'll give you a couple examples to help you remember this. Um, 
The first is uh, if you're trying to start a car and your battery is dead, uh, you'll hear this kind of ticking noise. The starter starts to kind of try to tick and, and activate and start the car, start the engine, but it doesn't have enough energy coming from your battery because your battery is dead, so the car won't start. It takes a fair amount of energy from your battery to get your car to start going. Um, and so that's why you might have to like jump the car off. That's why when you're jumping somebody's car off, you you connect your car that's good to their car and you let the battery charge up for a little bit before they try to crank their vehicle. Another example would be, and this example helps me remember the activation energy graph, is when you're trying to run uphill. So you're starting at the bottom of the hill it takes a whole lot of energy to get to the top of the hill and to get started towards the top of the hill and then running downhill is much more simplistic so this graph is showing you an exothermic reaction but you still need activation energy to start an endothermic reaction as well